and you've taught before, you've done yeah. like your own classes. What, what's one of the most common questions that you've been asked by some of the- How to work with actors. Oh, okay. That's the one everyone wants to know because that's the hardest thing to do, how to work with an actor. It's, uh, and it's funny to me that that's the hardest question. And you know what's weird is actors will often ask me, actually actors will often thank me for directing them because they say most people don't, which is an interesting thing. But yeah, how do you work with an actor? How do you get them to do what you want them to do? And I, here, here's my, I have a theory on that too. I have a theory on all these things, but directors are mechanical people by nature and they're multitaskers. This is a good thing. You, you kind of need to be because when you're on set, you're being asked 400 questions simultaneously all the time. So you only want the red shirt or the blue shirt? Or do you want the, you know, what, what lens are we on? 25, 35, you thinking longer? You know, or Dolly Steadicam. Uh, what color do you like? Do you like this color on the wall? Is it, you know, what, you know, is this the scene where Bob shows up or Jill shows up? You know, it's just these, you're, you're constantly shuffling and juggling and I'm just trying to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know? This is, that's the nature of filmmaking. And it's fun, that energy is really fun. The actor will come on and go, um, how do I be deeper? That's a different question because every other question you dealt with on set is a mechanical one, a binary one. Uh, you know, it's red or blue. It's, is this a 25 mil lens or, a, you know, 100 mil, you know, why, you know, you can click a box or flip a switch and it gives you your answer. Um, actor is not that way. They, they are a person, they're an emotion. Um, and I think this scares a lot of directors, which is why they hide in Video Village and shout their direction to the actor on set way over there. Directing actors, especially when you're new at it, I'm often reminded of the very first time I held a baby because it doesn't talk, it just wiggles. And it's kind of, and sometimes it's drooling and do that. And you're like, um, I, uh, I don't know what to do with this thing. Like, that's how it can feel. It's scary. And this is where you get the classic direction. The, the, the classic direction for directors who don't know what they're doing is take it up a notch. There is no more mechanical dis words than that phrase. Take it up a notch. Here, let me take your emotional dial and <laughs> That's where that comes from. Um, <clears throat> can, can you be more ang angrier? Can you be sadder? You know, they want to dial up and down. Well, when you're dealing with a human, it's a relationship. It's um, an intent. They, now, of course, good actors can probably interpret what you're saying, but you can't rely on that. And that's, this is one thing that drives me crazy when I hear people say, well, your key to good directing is casting. Yeah, it is, but you know, if you're just gonna let your actors do all the work without you saying something to them, they still wanna know your point to the scene or a general direction, because you're looking at the entire 30,000 foot view of your story. They still wanna know what you want um, or if they're getting there for you. So you can't totally rely on that. And that's also not realistic because every single project that you're on, let's say you do your indie film. Well, do you know how many times it happens where the, the the investor says, I'm gonna give you the money for the film, but my daughter has always wanted to be an actress, right? And she's never acted before, and suddenly you as the director have to deal with that? Look, every single, for every job on the set, you know, your DP, your AD, your, your production designer, your wardrobe person, they're all experts in their field. And you could come on not knowing anything about any of those departments and be fine. Your DP will carry you because they, that's what they do. The one job that no one will carry you is directing your actors. You better know how to talk to them. And that's the one thing that almost no one understands how to do. It's crazy to me. This is why a lot of people say you should take an acting class. And I think that's not enough. You should regularly take one and even better, if you really want to learn, teach one. Um, I did this in my own personal journey. I started, I just took four actors and I said, come to my studio. I'm gonna give you a scene from a play. I'm just gonna to try to direct it and see, without any cameras or lights, take that out of the equation. All I have are my words. And let me see if I can make you connect on a deeper level. That's terrifying. Because, 
What do you say if they're not connecting? Two people talking and they're not connecting. There is no switch that will make that happen. It comes to a relationship. And I had an actor friend tell me one time that an actor's performance is a reflection of the director. If they are not opening up, it's probably because you're not opening up. If they are not feeling as deeply as you want them to feel, then that probably means that you're not feeling as deeply as you want. And I've had this happen on set where it's like, I, in, in fact, when I was experimenting with working with actors, I had an actress come to me and she says, I'm, and I was telling her like, you're not opening up to your scene partner. You, you're, you need to open up. <laughs> I'm a mechanic still, I'm trying to turn the knob. Open, open, it's not working. Um, and she was frustrated. She said, yeah, I get this note all the time and I don't know what the problem is. And so that's where I got this advice. Maybe it's a reflection of the director. So I said, okay, well, you know, that's interesting about that is because she is not someone I personally care for. You know, I, she's a nice person, but I didn't really connect to her. So I was resisting getting to know her or opening up personally to her. Now I'm not telling her this, I'm just being honest. So the next time she showed up, I made a point to ask her about her kids to get to know her a little bit and just to like, maybe I can find a way for me to personally as a director connect to who she is. And she bloomed. <clears throat> I get really emotional talking about this, but it's so vital because that's what you need. You need them to open up and be there because that's what the camera sees. You want them to see that look in their eyes that gets them to be there. And it requires you as a director to be open as well. <clears throat> I get emotional about this stuff because, because I think it's important. I think Video Village becomes the shelter to shout your directions at because they're doing something you're terrified to do. Actors are doing the thing that is, un, that is unnatural for the rest of us to be naked in front of the world, not just physically sometimes, but emotionally. To really, Those actors that you're drawn to are the ones that are just so raw. Joaquin Phoenix being one, like you, you just, you can't take your eyes off him because he's just so out there. That's what you need. That requires you as the director to be there right there with them. So when it comes to directing actors, that's where you begin. In suppression, in the movie I just did, we had a scene where towards the end of the film, the actor really, it was the climactic emotional climax of the film. And he really had to just fall apart and just break open. And he, uh, I was scared. I was terrified of the scene. I was terrified from day one that the scene was coming. Um, I hadn't worked with this actor before. Uh, and he was, I knew he was scared. It was his first leading role in a movie. Um, and we, were, we both hadn't mentioned this scene all the way up and I purposely wasn't saying anything about it because I didn't want him to know I was scared. Uh, but I could tell that he was. So we get to the day and using all these things I've been just telling you, well, I started the day by just telling him about some of my biggest mistakes and some of my own personal struggles. And, and the, the, the scene was about him opening up about his father. And so I just started telling him stories about my life and asking him questions about his and, and things he'd been through just really as a human offset while they're lighting and stuff, just as a human, just talking, just opening up and you're getting emotional. It's like, you know, <clears throat> connecting person to person. So then when it came to time to do the scene, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we put the camera, it was a very you know, intimate shot. We got up close and I, you know, I hate video village personally. I like to have an own monitor and I want to sit right there with the actors so that we're very close. If it's an emotionally powerful scene, it's important, I think, to be physically close. So they're not yelling anything, you're just right there with them. I got there with them, we rolled camera and I just told them, okay, I'm not going to say action. All I'm going to say is you don't have to hold on to this anymore. Put my hand on his back. <clears throat> and I, I'm sorry, I keep getting emotional, but he just boom, he just blew up in the scene like it was amazing. And I just sat there right there with him physically until he just, it was, it was a beautiful performance. It was beautiful, <clears throat> but it required enormous amounts of terror for me to open up, to allow that to happen. And this also requires a lot of emotional maturity because I have to be able to, in this state, of if they're say if they're you know I keep saying deep emotion and crying and stuff I have to be able to be emotional with them but turn right around to the DP and say so when we do this make sure you push 
while I'm emotional. You know, it, it, it it's, that's hard to do, to be like that. Um, but that's what we're asking the actors to do. That's really what their job is. And once you start to understand that and be comfortable with that kind of emotion, um, then you can start to learn how to talk to them about different emotions. So classic direction things are, you know, result direction, you hear that, be angrier. That's, that's a result direction. I, you know, if you read uh, Judith Olson's book, I believe it's called Directing Actors. It's a really good book. She, she, uh, there's a method in the book, she talks about using words like punish them or threaten or tease. I'm gonna go to the store. Okay, I want you to say that line, but threaten me with that. You know, that, 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 that's great. Actors love that stuff. Um, sometimes I like to, if they're not, say, getting angry, or if I know that's what I need them to be is more angry and more dug in, I might go, this is the last thing you can say to them ever. This is the end of the conversation. Now come at it that way. Uh, sometimes I'll even go, okay, that was amazing, but we can go deeper. Let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, these, that's not result directing, that's a relational thing. Sometimes I'll have their scene partner tell them something that I might trigger them. Now, I'll say this, but this is, you have to really be careful with that because it's not a trick. It's not um, being mean to the actor. It's not abusing them, which you, we've heard stories yes. like that on mm -hmm. set. That's, I cannot tell you, that's not acting. I've heard store, horror stories of people saying, like say racial insults to someone to get them to be angry. That's, that's not directing. That's just being a jerk. Right. And that's not, you do that, you're going to ruin the trust of your actor and they'll shut down for you. They won't come back. And in you're going to acting class too. Sorry. Oh, yeah. it happens all the time yeah. in acting mm -hmm. classes mm -hmm. and it pisses me off because it's not, it's mean, it's unfair. They're trying to open up and being emotional and you're just abusing them. That's what you're doing. That's, and you're going to get a reputation for being that way. Um, so, but what I mean is like, you know, all right, right, you know, I'll maybe whisper to the actor. I've done this before where I'll say, ask them a question that's not in the script. In character. Okay, okay. So, in action. So, what is your favorite color anyway? And it's great because you'll get, <laughs> what you'll get is a, just the actor authentically being, this works great with kids too, by the way. To get them, if they're struggling with line readings and they, they're reading it the same way, that happens a lot, where they'll learn it with their parents a certain way, but they're having a hard time breaking that pattern. You can get the other actor, if they're an adult especially, to like play with them a little bit, get them to ask other questions. These are ways you can get, what you want, your goal is to get it to be real. We want truth in the scene. That's the goal, always, no matter what genre you're working with. So doing things like that is really helpful um, sometimes. And it's important also to pay attention to the physical things that they like. Some actors are physical. Make them clench their fist, make them ball up. Some actors really respond to that. Um, having them say things is, a, is another way before the take starts. You know, have them apologize to their scene partner. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then, okay, now action. Uh, you know, um, being emotionally available and in in tune also comes to play in when you see them resisting you. Understanding that, uh, understanding, oh, they're scared. They're worried about this scene not looking good. Okay, they're worried about being humiliated because of what they're doing. Okay, okay. We can deal with that. That means, as a director, I need to assure you that I got your back. I'm not going to let you fail. You know, um, that comes from just being very emotionally intelligent. You know, that takes study. You can't just take an acting class and learn that. You need to read books. You need to, I mean, go to therapy. You go and read therapy books about human behavior. Open yourself up, understand how your own mind works, understand your own insecurities and the way you function. That's how you get to the root. Because you know what? That's what actors are doing in their classes. Most of those acting classes are like therapy sessions. They're unlearning human defenses right. and figuring out ways around them. And the better you get at that, the better you're gonna start spotting things like, say for example, there are some people who freak out in their acting. Like they're, they're like the, the violent <laughs> guy. Like, have you seen this where it's like, they're great at throwing a temper tantrum, but if you're if you study it long enough, you'll start to recognize, oh, that's not acting, that's a show. They're doing that because it looks sexy, but it's not. They're not feeling anything. They're they're hiding. They're using that as a smoke screen. So, only by study, 
meticulous study and practices, you'll start to recognize those things. So it's, and it's, that's, that's directing. That's what, that's, if you study nothing else, that's the skill you should learn. Because there's no trust in that. I, no, I've, yeah. I've, I've taken acting classes like that. And where people would just be devastated and they'd be crying because one person was coming on to one person and they really liked them and the other person was totally tearing them down and it was just like this devastating thing to watch. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I don't want to sign up for this. Yeah, that's, it happens a lot. It's, yeah, you, I've you heard be, that. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you've seen that happen on set to you as a director, it's your job to protect them, you know? It's, I haven't seen it on set because I haven't, yeah. Yeah, that, it can happen. It's and, really? So that's a, you know, you as a director, you're, you're, you are a protector in a way of sometimes from a scene partner. Sometimes let's say it's a nude scene, understanding that that's humiliating and maybe you don't need to have all these people in the room. Uh, or it's an emotional scene and they're trying to open up and they're having a hard time because there's too many people in the room. Or someone's making jokes over here, like protecting them in that way. Um, sometimes protecting them from themselves is important. Like. Like I've had to tell actors, look, we're really wide on this shot, so I'm not reading all the emotion on your face. Say it, don't, don't throw it all out there just yet. Just hold on to some of that. Like make your movements bigger in this take, but then we're gonna come in for a close up next time. So just, you know, cause that can happen too. They can, they can blow themselves out and we don't even see them in the shot. Um, yeah, you're, that, that comes down to having their back. I'll tell you the, the best thing the way I've gotten the best performances about from an actor, and this is so much fun, is if you get, you shoot your scene, you get it all done, and you still have a little bit of time, and you tell the actor, all right, we've got it in the can, it's all there, this one's for you. You cannot make a mistake, you cannot fail. Now, now try one, just try stuff. They I get, every time I've done that, almost every time, that's the take I use. Because they're now, they're, they're operating without a net. They, they know they can't fail. But if you do, this is important, if you do that, if you tell them that, don't direct them. Let them do it. Don't judge what they say. Don't try to curb it again. Just let them, let them do it. If it works, it works. If, if it not, no big deal. We've already got it. You know, and then don't do 50 more takes. Like let that be the last one and then move forward. So uh, uh, yeah, and that's when you get surprised. And that is the joy of filmmaking right there when you are surprised by what the other artists are bringing to the table. That goes for all the departments, by the way. You know, being surprised by what the DP's idea was and you're like, oh man, I never realized that's how cool it could be. That's the fun part of filmmaking. That's what we all want. It's, and it's, when the actors do it, it's nothing better, nothing better. Because you don't want to push, you know, tear them apart. Sure. Because you know, it's hard. Man, it's hard to do that. It work. What they're doing is... Yeah. You know, your rest of your crew is more physical. They're not... Have you ever tried crying for 12 straight hours? That's hard to do. Or laughing for straight... You know, or physical comedy or whatever. That's, right. That's a lot. Of, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true.